I believe God is already helping you where you're watching here today. You can be led by the Holy Spirit through any and all adversities. The wonderful Holy Spirit, He wants to be your guide, your partner to lead you and guide you through the adversity and He'll lead you into discovering the best that's already inside of you. He'll lead you into places of wisdom that gives ideas and ways to solve problems that it is that you face. And He will release a second wind when you feel like quitting and giving up. In the midst of adversity, the Holy Spirit, He leads us into these good pastures. In fact, right now in 2020, you could say that our world is facing a crisis or a, an adversity. And we must have this leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives, leading us through it to victory, to triumph, and to the the, the good places that He wishes to bring you to. Know this about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the same nature as Jesus Christ. They have different functions. They are different parts of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit has the same nature as Jesus Christ. The Scripture says in John chapter 15 and verse 26 that the Holy Spirit has come to testify regarding Jesus. In other words, bear witness of who Jesus is is the script where we understand that the Holy Spirit does not speak of himself but he speaks of the ministry of Jesus Christ and I share that because you know the Holy Spirit he is not the unpredictable solo agent of the Trinity or of heaven no he is one and the same they have different functions but similar natures and I share that because often when we talk about the Holy Spirit Sometimes we can have a, an easier way of understanding Jesus, gracious Jesus, but then when it comes to the Holy Spirit, maybe we view Him as nitpicking or fault-finding. I want to obliterate that view of the Holy Spirit here this morning or whatever time it is that you're watching and to understand that the wonderful Holy Spirit, He is of the same nature of Jesus, as Jesus Christ. The Scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ was a friend of sinners. Luke chapter, in the book of Luke in chapter 7, it describes Jesus eating with, with known sinners and that the Pharisees, they, they, they criticized Jesus and said, well, he's just a friend of sinners. But I think there was a message there for us and that's why it was recorded in the pages of the scriptures because there we understand the nature of Jesus. But remember, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, while different in function, have the same nature. And so you could say that the Holy Spirit has a sim the same is a friend of sinners. Uh, there was a painting uh, that uh, a man in the 1800s painted of Jesus eating with sinners, Alexander, uh, Alexander Bida, and he, put a he painted a picture of Jesus eating with, with, with common people. And I, I love pictures because a picture is worth a thousand words. And I think in that picture we can, yes, see the attitude of Jesus, but recognize Jesus, the Holy Spirit, same nature. And so I share that just to encourage you today that you can be led by this wonderful Holy Spirit. He is not the fault-finding solo agent of heaven with a different nature and character. No, the character of Jesus and the character of the Holy Spirit are one and the same. And so you can and we can expect the Holy Spirit to lead us through the adversity lead us into triumph, lead us into to good places. And He leads us from wilderness into fruitful fields. He causes us to have strength and He brings excellence and promotion in our lives. Who does the Holy Spirit lead? The scriptures are clear that the Holy Spirit leads the sons and daughters of God. In fact, in Romans, the book of Romans in chapter 8 and verse 14, it says, those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons and they are, they are the, by the Spirit are the children of God. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. This verse is not saying that to be a son, you must be led by the Spirit. That's not what the verse is saying. It's, it's not a qualification, but it is simply stating that sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit. In fact, we understand Jesus Himself said that those who believe on me, to them are given the right to become the children of God. And so children of God are those who simply believe on Jesus, not by works, but by grace alone. We become children of God, and as children of God, we are led by the Spirit. 
And so, in fact, and, and then in verse 16, it said in Romans 8, it said, and the Spirit has come to testify that you are a child of God. And so, you know, I see a beautiful uh, picture there of the Holy Spirit who is leading all those who believe on Jesus Christ. Do you know that the Holy Spirit, He is your guide? He is leading you? You know, sometimes we get this view that to be led by the Spirit, we must have perfection in our lives. Perfection's good, I suppose. I, I, I aspire to live, you know, with perfection. But at the same time, recognize this, that perfection is not required to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit has come to strengthen us so we live a better life. But perfection is not the prerequisite. The prerequisite to be led by the Holy Spirit is to be a son or a daughter of God, which is ours by faith. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You simply said, Jesus, I believe, and you became a son or a daughter. And so I declare the Holy Spirit, he is leading all God's children. He's leading you. He's leading me. The question simply that remains is, will we follow? And, you know, I've discovered that In my life, in the natural speaking, if I know somebody has my best intentions at heart, in other words, if I know they love me, I have a much easier time following them. Their advice, their their guidance. If I know that somebody loves me, has my best intentions, I'm more apt to listen to their advice or follow their their guidance. You know, I think it's the same way with the Holy Spirit. We must understand his nature. That's why I started that his nature is the same as Jesus, same as the Father, different function, same nature, because we must understand he has our best intentions. The scriptures say that the Holy Spirit has come to shed abroad in our hearts the love of the Father. And so it's by the Holy Spirit he's come to testify that we are sons and daughters. And so we must recognize and receive this love because when we have experienced this wonderful love of the Holy Spirit, revealing the love of the Father and the love of Jesus to us, it becomes very easy to follow after his guidance. You will be, you can be led by the Holy Spirit through the adversity. 2020, there's adversity all around us. Economic adversity, health adversity. In people's minds, there's adversity. Maybe you're experiencing that at home. But you can and you will be led by the Spirit through that adversity, stronger, Better, You know, the scriptures call adversity trials and the tri- and it talks about trials in the light of fire, fire. In other words, when you walk walking through fire and you can imagine walking through fire, it's a painful experience. I thankfully haven't done it, but you can imagine walking through fire. It's painful and it calls adversity trials and it likens it to walking through through a, through fire. First Peter chapter four and 12 is one of those such scriptures that describes it as such. In verse 12, it says, beloved, don't be surprised that the fiery ordeal, trials, troubles uh, among you, which come for your testing as though uh, something strange was happening to you. He says, don't be surprised that the fiery ordeal among you, which comes for the testing. It's, he's talking about fiery ordeals. And he says, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. You know, I, 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 I probably like the people he was writing to. Sometimes I get surprised by the troubles. Maybe, you, maybe you're saying, why is this all going on around us? Well, you know, the scriptures are very clear that, that the evil around us, the difficulties that happen, Paul talks about this often, it's a result of the evil day. He talks about the evil day often. There's evil around us. We live in an evil day. It's not from God. There's evil as a result of man's uh, poor choices. But sometimes we get so fixated on the why. Why is this happening? Jesus' own disciples, they encountered uh, evil in the life of a blind man. Man had been born blind since birth. And so they wondered, why is this evil happened to him? Jesus' own disciples came to the conclusion, well, maybe it's because he did wrong or his parents did wrong. And so that's why this evil happened. And you know, Jesus said, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you why. That's not the point, Jesus said. It's not the why it happened. Maybe they did evil, maybe not. But he said, the point is that this is the situation now and it will be brought about for the glory of God. And he healed the blind man. And I want to encourage you today. You know, even us sometimes believers, we can get caught up in the why. Why is the evil happening? And we start looking for the Antichrist or we start looking for, you know, the, the judgment coming or, or all these different types of signs. And Jesus said, you know, it's not for you to know the signs of the times in that sense. But he did direct us to his will in our lives today, which is receiving his son, Jesus, and living this victorious life in health and wholeness and wealth. And the Holy Spirit has come to lead us through the wilderness, through the adversity into into pastures that are green and strong. And I believe that it's not a mistake. You are watching here today. The Holy Spirit is with you now. 
Not perfection to be required to be led. Simply a son or a daughter of God in Christ Jesus. So on one hand, adversity, the scriptures liken to fire. I find it interesting that on the same hand, the, 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 the scriptures also liken the Holy Spirit to fire. Now, I'm not like linking the two together, but I'm saying, you know, in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he, he fell or he was poured out with tongues of fire. Uh, the scriptures say that J John the Baptist said that Jesus would come and he would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so one of the symbols or pictures of the Holy Spirit is uh, fire. I find that fascinating. On one hand, adversity is likened to fire, but on the other hand, the Holy Spirit is likened to fire. And you know, there's a phrase that I, I thought of this week, and it's a phrase, it's called fight, fight fire with fire. Have you ever heard that phrase, fight fire with fire? Well, I propose this. We're in the middle of the adversity, the situations that we face in life, the trials. Don't get mad at the adversity. Don't get upset and bitter and angry. I mean, God's not mad if we do, but it's not to our benefit. Don't get angry. No, accept the fire of the Holy Spirit. In other words, his leading and his gentle guidance and, and his provision. Accept his uh, leading in our lives and he'll lead us through into victory. Fight fire with fire. You see, there's so many benefits of being led by the Holy Spirit, but one acute benefit is that the Holy Spirit he will bring out your best in the middle of the adversity. Your best, meaning your new gifts, talents, you didn't even know that you were, that were there. Love and different, different attributes of the fruit of the Spirit, they come out. The Holy Spirit will guide you, lead you to discover your best in the middle of the fire or the adversity. First Peter chapter one and verse six, it says, in this you greatly rejoice. Now, I, you know, I don't feel like rejoicing in the middle of trials, but he tells us why we can, even though now for a little while, don't forget that phrase, for a little while. The trials, the adversity, the fire don't last forever. What we're going through right now doesn't last forever. He said for a little while, but he said rejoice in this anyhow, if you've been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, not the existence of your faith, but the proof, in other words, you have it in Christ, but it will become to, it will be seen in glory. And he goes on and he says, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, it might be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, fire refines. Fire is, refines gold. I think I have a picture of a gold refinery. And what happens when the gold is put in the fire, the impediments are if burnt off. And what is left is pure gold. There is gold in your life. There is gold in your nature. How do I know that? The scripture says that Christ Jesus lives in you. In fact, the scripture says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. And so there are riches, there are talents, there are gifts, there are fruits of the Spirit within you and myself that we have yet to discover, but it's in the adversity it's in the fire where the Holy Spirit leads us through to discover gifts and talents that we didn't even know that were there. Last week, we heard a testimony, a story, a video. Tracy told her story and how that their business had been floundering since 2017. And yet in the middle of this pandemic, this year, the pandemic hit, the lockdown hit. And most small businesses, a lot of small businesses are struggling and and she shared how they were very concerned for their small business, which was already struggling. And yet she she declared that in the middle of this pandemic, their business was doing better, better sales than they'd ever discovered. You see, that's discovering ways forward in the middle of the adversity. And that's the Holy Spirit. I work in our lives. She attributed, she said, I, she asked the Holy Spirit for help in the middle of that trial. You know, there's another lady in our church shared with me recently how her and her husband had been going through a, a, a tumultuous time in their relationship. In fact, she thought it was over didn't end up ending, but at that point in time, it looked like the relationship was over. And so in the middle of that, she said, well, I decided I, I didn't have a, wasn't making a living at that time. So she went back to school and she got a degree and it's helping her now. Now they ended up staying together. That's good. But, but at the same time, it was in the middle of the adversity, the Holy Spirit led her to you know, to branch out, to discover new gifts and talents within her. I was you know, fascinated this week. I was studying fire, and on the west coast of America, there, you know, it's very fire prone, fire forest fires all the time. You know, I discovered that trees in that area have become, they've adapted. 
They've adapted and they've begun to produce seeds. They call them, this, this was the news or the, the science article, fire activated seeds. You see the fire is very prone to fire in those areas, so the trees have adapted and they've begun to form these seeds that are covered in resins. There's a picture of one of those types of trees. There's others, but the lodgepole pine. And they produce seeds that are covered in resin. It's a gooey substance. It's a type of uh, a, a sap. A and so this resin is melted when the fire burns. In other words, the seeds are only activated or released when the fire melts the resin and the seed then is implanted into the ground and it germinates. And see, I see that as a picture for our lives today. You're going through the fire. You're going through the adversity. And yet there are fire activated seeds in your life that are going to be and will be discovered in the middle of the fire, in the middle of the adversity. This is the Holy Spirit's good guidance and leading in our lives. In other words, 2020 has not come to destroy your dreams. It's not come to destroy your health or your finances but to help you and I to discover new gifts, talents, opportunities in business and health and relationships that we might not have ever discovered unless we had encountered the adversity. I don't like the adversity. I think Peter acknowledged in the scriptures that Adversity is not fun, but it's in the adversity where seeds are activated. And you know, I see that in the life of three young men in the scriptures, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were slaves in Babylon. And when you are a slave, you have no prospects for your career, your finances. What are they going to do? Promote you from slave to slave, right? And yet it got even worse when the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, said, you I command you to bow down to me. They refused and said, we will not do that. In fact, in Daniel 3, they said, they said, let me flip my notes here. They said, if we are thrown into the blazing fiery furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. You see, it went from bad to worse, and yet it was in the fire. You see, what happened was they didn't end up burning. There was a fourth man in that furnace. That was Jesus, a picture of Jesus Christ. And they were brought out of the furnace. And after that, they were promoted to leaders of the entire land. They, I'm sure they didn't like the fiery experience, but it was after the fire where they were promoted. And I declare to you today, this is not a fun time in many regards. There is evil all around us, but all the more we must welcome the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit to lead us through the fire to new strengths, new seeds, fire be, seeds being activated in our lives. There are new business opportunities. There are new health that are coming to your life, new things that are coming, new relationships as a result, not because of the, not, not saying the fire is from God, but it's happening. In the book of Acts, the, the church, it was in times of persecution where they expanded. The church in Macedonia, it was in times of poverty where God prospered them. Another thing the Holy Spirit does in adversity, he directs us to the solutions to our problems in the times of adversity. In other words, he gives wisdom. What does fire do? Fire illuminates. Fire lights up a room. I have a picture of a torch in a long room, and it's in dark times when we need light. It's in dark times where we need solutions to the problems that we face. Watch this, Psalms 119. The scripture says, the unfolding of your word it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. You see, the Holy Spirit's come to guide us through the scriptures, and in the scriptures, there are answers to problems. Now, maybe you say, but Nathan, the scriptures, they seem irrelevant to my life. They seem a different time and a different place. I don't see how they give me real solutions to the problems that I'm facing today. Watch this. The Holy, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Proverbs 1.23. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you and I will make my words known to you. Let me liken it to this. In sports, I like sports. Now, there's not, nothing to watch right now, but I like sports. And, and in sports, have you ever watched a sports game on TV without the commentator, without volume? It loses some appeal. It loses a lot of appeal. And I'll tell you how much appeal it has. Recently, CBS hired a, 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 a guy who talks about what's going on on the field, called a color commentator, hired one for $17 million a year. That's more than I'll make in a lifetime, probably. Well, maybe not, let's just believe. But I'm saying more than most of us make in a lifetime, more than some of the players on the field make, $17 million a, a, a year just to describe what's going on on the field. Why? Because color commentary matters. 
And I tell you, the Holy Spirit, I, I apologize for such a simple illustration, but the Holy Spirit, you could call him the color, co there's a picture of Tony Romo. There's a, he's the color comment, not Tony Romo. The Holy Spirit is the color commentator of the scriptures. He brings life to it. He brings meaning to what you are reading. You might have read something one time, but then another time you read it through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and he brings light and solutions to the problem. There is an economic darkness that is here and is probably going to get worse. I'm not a prophet. I'm just saying you, you, you hear what, see what's going on, the amount of money being spent, being created, being printed. But I tell you, and people are being laid off. I've, I've talked to people in our church, laid off. And yet in the middle of all that, the Holy Spirit wants to give us, a, give us solutions to the problems. There are new, ec new economies opening up. There are new sectors. And the Holy Spirit... Let's, let's be very clear. Let's not separate him to, well, from our daily life. Oh, it's just for Sunday. No, the Holy Spirit is with us 24-7. He wants to lead you into new sectors, new ideas. Maybe it's new training. Maybe it's new ways of thinking. Maybe it's new economic or new economic sectors opening up. But the Holy Spirit, he did that for Daniel. He did that for Joshua, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see the Holy Spirit, he, he, you know, he's not this mysterious, hard to figure out being. He is a friend of sinners. He is with us always. He, he, when his influence is in our lives, he doesn't make us weak head in the clouds. No, he makes us the sharpest of individuals. I like Daniel. The scripture said that God, the spirit of God within him made him excellent. It brought him promotion and increase. Ah, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Welcome him today. You say, how does he lead me? If you're a child of God, he's already leading you. Just welcome him, his presence, his leading and his guiding. He opens up new sources. You see, and unusual ways of operating. This is the role and the working of the Holy Spirit. I remember one time, uh, a couple of, number of years back, Pastor Peter and I were uh, uh, working on a, a, a deal for the ministry and, and there was a lot of lawyers involved. And I still remember, this was a lesson I learned from Pastor, I've learned many lessons, but this is one of them. And we were driving to meet those lawyers and that big negotiation that was going on for the ministry. And, and I remember, he just simple words, uh, wasn't a great prayer and fasting meeting in that sense, but it was just, Lord, help us, give us wisdom. And you know, God gave him an idea that saved the ministry, 400000 dollars. That's a big deal to us and it's probably a big deal to you. You see, let's not relegate the Holy Spirit to just Sundays or just ministry work. No, the Holy Spirit's involved in that, thankfully, but every single day leading, guiding, bringing a spirit of excellence in all that we do. The Holy Spirit's opening up new opportunities for you, unusual opportunities. Be open to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit in dark times, in trying times. He is the most unusual, the most beautiful ways forward. He has new opportunities. He brings favor in our lives. Number three, final point, the Holy Spirit, when we feel like quitting and giving up, and I think Peter acknowledged when in, in his writings, you know, he said, you're greatly distressed, so he's trying to encourage them. So it's natural to be discouraged in tough times and in adversity. And maybe that's where you are right now. I love it, the Holy Spirit. In those times, he releases and energy, he releases a motivation into our lives to carry on. You know, what does fire do? Fire releases energy, heat and light. Fire releases energy. I love what the scriptures say about the Holy Spirit, John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickens. What does that word quicken mean? It means to make alive, to kindle, and to burn more intense. I liken it to a second wind. Have you ever been running and you get tired, but then suddenly you get a second wind? I liken this to the Holy Spirit. Even the people in the scriptures that God used, they were prone to discouragement, and yet the Holy Spirit came and gave them a second wind. But I love the Holy Spirit. Spirit, he gives not only a second wind, but a third wind and a fourth wind and a fifth. He keeps on. He'll give you a second wind today. Where are you at? Are you discouraged? Do you feel like quitting? I read statistics this week or heard them on the news that 60% of children have lost their motivation to study. I, read, I also saw in the same article that 56% of adults in Canada today, as a result of this lockdown, they feel their mental stability has deteriorated. We need a second wind. Welcome the Holy Spirit today. He will give you a second wind of joy, a third wind of peace. He brings in waves all that is, that is necessary in our present 
situation. He loves you. He cares for you. He lead us through adversity. This hasn't come to destroy you, but like those fire activated seas, there are new opportunities that you, you and I, we will discover in these dark times. And yes, they are dark times. And yes, there is evil all around us, but be of good cheer. The Holy Spirit who never leaves us nor forsakes us, he is with us. He brings new relationship opportunities in families and in health. The wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. He cares for you. He loves you. He's the same nature as Jesus. I remember, you know, in the scriptures, it talks about Jesus. And when Jesus saw a need, he wasn't turned away by the need. He didn't think, why aren't you doing more to fix the need? No, Jesus was moved with compassion. And the Holy Spirit of the same nature is moved by compassion toward your need. He's not turned off by you, wondering why you haven't done more to fix your problem. Maybe there's more you could do, but the Holy Spirit, he'll empower you to do it. But the Holy Spirit is moved by compassion. Is it a health need in your body that's discouraging you at that adversity? Is it a health problem? Well, I love what the scripture says, Romans 8, he that raised Christ from the dead, there's that word again, quicken, he'll bring life, he'll breathe that second wind into your mortal bodies. That's your physical flesh. The Holy Spirit quickens the life of Jesus. The healing virtue of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, brings life to that in your body. There's healing here today. In fact, we're going to have a special time of prayer today during the Holy Communion for healing for bodies. We have a remarkable story to share with you of somebody healed from terminal cancer and paralysis, inoperable paralysis. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here to lead you into health. What, but maybe it's something else. Maybe you say, I don't feel like I have faith for my life. Faith for, you know, you talk about new seeds of uh, act, fire activated seeds and new opportunities. I don't know if I have faith for that, Nathan. Well, listen to what the Holy Spirit does. The scripture says in, in uh, Romans, it says that God quickens the dead and calleth those, calleth those things that be not as though they were. The Holy Spirit quickens the faith of Jesus in our lives. You have Jesus, but sometimes we're not tapping into his life. The Holy Spirit brings life to it. He initiates fire to it. He breathes faith into our being so that you can believe, yes, there are fire activated seeds for my business, new opportunities, unusual favor, unprecedented opportunities in this time. The Holy Spirit will do what you cannot do, what I cannot do. He breathes life into those situations. Maybe you say, I feel distant from God and all of this. Where is the, you know, in the darkness, I feel distant from God. Listen to what the Holy Spirit does. In Psalm 80, verse 18, the, the psalmist says, quicken us and why will call on your name. Have you ever felt angry, maybe a little bit disappointed with God? I think the psalmist did there and I have in my life, but I've discovered the wonderful Holy Spirit, what he will do in those times. What I, when I do not have the faith, the strength, He'll quicken me to call in the name. He'll quicken you to call. I believe that's happening right now. The Holy Spirit is with you now. Yes, we're separated by a camera, but the Holy Spirit, he's quickening that in you now. That love, the love of God that burst the faith of Jesus Christ, he's quickening that right now. Maybe you say, but Nathan, I'm so stuck in bondage. I'm so stuck in defeat. I, I need help. Whether well, the Holy Spirit helps you too. In Ephesians chapter 2, and you hath he quickened, hath he breathed life into who are dead in trespasses and sins. That's for believers. You say, I'm stuck in a bondage or an addiction. You know, in these dark times, sometimes that can actually make the addiction worse. So I feel the Holy Spirit is not mad at you. He is for you. And he can breathe life into you, a new discipline, a new resolve to overcome, not of your works, but of his work. The Holy Spirit breathes life into you. But maybe it is that you've never believed on Jesus Christ and you say, I'm, st I'm stuck in my bad ways. I'm stuck in guilt and shame. The Holy Spirit comes with the life of Christ. You say, how do I, do? How do I receive the Holy Spirit? The scripture, I was clear from the very top. Those who believe on Jesus, to them he gives the right to become the sons and the daughters of God. And as sons and daughters of God, the Holy Spirit comes and he begins to lead us through the adversity. I want to invite you right now. You've never acknowledged Christ or you acknowledge Christ as your Savior. You believed, but you've fallen away and you believe that he was against you. Can I encourage you right now? Would you call on his name? Would you believe as I pray? Just as simple as this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you took my sin. You died, but God, you raised your son Jesus from the dead and you are alive. I receive your life. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me your wonderful Holy Spirit. Jesus, I thank you. 
Amen. I believe that something is happening on the inside of you. It's called new birth. It's called salvation. It's God's free gift to all mankind. And we'd love to partner with you on this journey, this journey of faith with the Lord Jesus Christ and his wonderful Holy Spirit. There's some information on our website you can, uh, about salvation. In fact, we'd love to send you a free book, Salvation, God's Gift to You and Enlightenment, two free booklets. We'd love to send it to you or you can download it. The information is on the screen. But we, it is our privilege to pray with you today. We'd be honored to partner with you. And when these doors open up, for those of you who are here in Toronto, we welcome you to come meet us in person. We'd love to meet you.